you have a Bible, let's go to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, and if you want to be ahead, we're also going to go back to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 2 is where we're going to start this evening. We'll start there, we'll come back, and then we'll go uh, to chapter 1, and we'll go back to chapter 2 after that. But Luke chapter 2, and I want to speak to you this evening on the excitement of Christmas. Now, as I mentioned and alluded to a little bit this morning, Christmas is a time of year where just you just get a lot of excitement. I felt this morning as we were beginning the service and as the service was just going on, I just felt the genuine excitement of people being here and, and just worshiping the Lord. Like the first song was like, woo, like we sang, oh, come all faithful. And literally it sounded like the, the choir was coming home. We had a 70-person choir singing back, and it sounded great just singing that song. I don't know how Brother Gladfell is leading it. I know he enjoyed uh, We Three Kings with the little hold there on the chorus. Uh, but I just felt like this morning was just like a really genuine excitement just to be here and to be able to be in God's house. And, and, and Christmas to me feels that way. It, it just is just a genuine, it's like a different time of year to, to me. It's just exciting. Like when I was little, it was just exciting to be able to open up the gifts at whatever time in the morning it was. And it was fun, except for the one year we were woken up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I know my mom's watching, and she loves to tell this story quite a bit. But she was so excited for Christmas that she woke us up at 3 in the morning, but the excitement we wanted to give back to her wasn't there. Because 3 o'clock in the morning, as a 7, 8, 9, 10-year-old, well, we weren't awake. So she was so excited for the gifts that she was giving us, but we were like, ripping it open. Quiet, cool, hooray. Go back to bed. <laughs> That's all we were thinking about. I mean, so so that probably wasn't the most exciting Christmas that was that she that we probably went through just because it was a little too early for us. And some of you are thinking, three AM, I'm up there every morning. I'm not. Okay, five o'clock is still early for me, but I still have to be up at five o'clock a lot. Um, but I want you to imagine with me about two thousand years ago. When the news was delivered about the birth of Jesus, can you sense the excitement that was permeating at the time? When Mary got to hear that word, that she was going to be the one with child, can you just imagine the excitement that would be going on? This is something that had been ruined for thousands of years. It had been building. And it, had, and it was an exciting time. But... Unfortunately, though, we didn't get to see her reaction. Uh, th- we didn't get the necessary. We saw some of it, but we saw how she wrote it in, in, in the Magnificent at the end of Luke chapter 1. We're not going to look at that this evening. But we can see the excitement that Mary had. But I, wanna, I wish I could be there to see the actual reaction. Just how was she? Like What was like her facial expressions, her reactions, and all that? I'm the one giving birth to the Son of God? I mean, every lady from... Adam and Eve, all the way up to her, were hoping, hoping to be the one lady that would give birth to that Christ child. I mean, Eve named the first son Cain because she had gotten a man from the Lord. She probably believed that that was the one. Well, you know the story of Cain and Abel, don't you? Was Cain a really great child? No, he was not. He killed his brother Abel. But all throughout the thousands of years, God was setting up for this instance 2,000 years ago when the birth of Jesus happened so tonight I want us to regain the excitement for Christmas I want us to just sense the excitement that's there we're gonna look at two people we're gonna look at two different viewpoints we're gonna look at it from one viewpoint which may not make sense in the beginning but we're gonna tie it in once we bring in the other viewpoint and these individuals were used by God to communicate the excitement of Jesus' birth and preparing the way of Jesus. So let's look at Luke chapter 2 and verse number 29. Oh, um, yes, 29 and 30. Luke chapter 2, verses 29 and 30. And we're going to come back to this in a little while. <clears throat> but verse 29 and 30 says, As Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, Verse 30, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. I submit to you this evening as we begin that we can be blessed 
and thankful for the eternal life that we can have because we were blessed by the best. We were blessed by God, and God gave us that hope, that Christ child, Jesus. Father, help us as we look into your word this evening that we can understand it, that we can grow, we can be able to look at it here. Help us to set aside any distractions or anything that might uh, prevent us from being able to hear your word openly this evening. Help me as I preach to help it to be clear, help it to be plain, easy to be understood. And Father, I pray that you just help us just to be able to have this excitement of Christmas and the Christmas season and be able to just uh, just remember why we celebrate it and, why we, and, and, and the reason that it's just such an exciting time. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I mean, having something, having a birth is exciting. For those of you who are parents, you know that feeling. It's just exciting to see that new life come and hold that life in your arms. I remember um, when Liam was born, and I got to hold him the, the first day he was born. He was this little tiny guy, and I, and I wasn't used to holding children that small. He was like six pounds, and I was like delicately trying to figure out how do I pick up this kid? Like he's so small and so light, and I wasn't used to that. But it was just exciting to see there's that new life and that life that was just, <clears throat> you don't know how God's going to use that particular life. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I want to look at the excitement here of two individuals. The first one may not catch you in a sense of the excitement that we're trying to drive towards, but it's a really good idea as far as it builds into Jesus because we're going to be looking at the earthly father of John the Baptist which would have, he would have come six months before Jesus would have come. So hold your place in Luke chapter 2. Go back to chapter 1. And I want us to look at verse number 67. So about probably a page or so back for most of you. <clears throat> Luke chapter 1. As you're turning there, Elizabeth was told she would give birth to the John the Baptist six months prior to the announcement to Mary concerning Jesus. We find that in the beginning of the Gospel of Luke because after six months she had gone to see Mary and, and Mary, the babe leaped in the womb and, and whatnot. Verse 44 of Luke chapter 1, For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Even John the Baptist was excited before he was born that Jesus was coming. Mary gives praise to God after that announcement. That's in verses 46 to 56 here. But before this, and here's what also strikes it very uniquely, is that Zechariah he doubted that his wife Elizabeth would be able to give birth because they were old and stricken in years, and God shut his mouth throughout the entire pregnancy because of that doubt. So he hadn't spoken for quite a while, and then they wanted to name the child after Zechariah, but John, Zechariah said, no, this is, his name is going to be John because that's what God told Elizabeth to name the child. So we're going to pick up here in verse number 67, and, and as we pick it up there, actually, if you have your Bible there, look back at verse 64. It says this, And his mouth was open immediately, and his tongue loose, and he spake and praised God. He hadn't spoken for nine months. Now we're going to see exactly what he's going to say. Verse 67 says this, And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Sense the excitement here that he's going to have. Now, again, he's excited for John the Baptist, but who was John the Baptist? He would be the one who would prepare the way of the Lord. So he was the next step, the final step, you could say, before Jesus would come six months, uh, a few months later. So let's look at his excitement here. Verse 68, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. He's, he's given praise to God. Why? Because he's come back and he's redeemed his people. He's brought back his people. Why would he say that? Well, Israel had, had issues. They hadn't followed God. God has essentially separated them out. And they were put in captivity. And they were still in captivity up to that point. Verse 69. And have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Verse 70, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have since 
which have been since the world began. This event was coming, and now it, that event was about to be here. And you can sense the excitement that Zachariah was having as, as, this, as John the Baptist was born, and then Jesus would be coming just very soon thereafter. Verse 671, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Now he's looking a bit at the physical sense here. But verse 72, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he spare unto, swear unto our father Abraham. What? That he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest. Notice highest is capitalized there. Again, referring to John. But John, again, would be the one who would be the forerunner to Jesus Christ. The one who would then baptize Jesus and announce that the Messiah has come. And you can sense that excitement there. Verse 76 continues. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. This was John the Baptist's goal. To bring people to Jesus. That was his sole purpose in life. And you can sense the excitement there. Why? Because people needed hope. They really did. And sometimes we live in a society we, we live in a society today where people try to cut the hope right out from under us they say this can't happen this can't happen oh they always give the worst case scenario and this all this is this right here is the best case scenario this time had been prophesied for thousands and thousands of years and now it's only a couple months away from starting and being fulfilled there's just genuine excitement there verse 78 Though the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts until the day of his showing unto Israel. So, so what are we seeing here? That he would show people to God that, that John the Baptist would be holy and righteous to show people who Jesus was, to be that example. He would follow the Nazarene vow. He, he would be able to show people redemption, how they can trust in Jesus to be their Savior. His calling was foretold in Malachi chapter 3, verse 7, uh, Malachi chapter 3, verse 1, Behold, I send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek. And this was 400 years roughly prior to this, this chapter in this book taking place. And shall suddenly come into his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, ye shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. And then in Luke chapter 1 and verse 17, also reaffirms this. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. What an exciting time. Zechariah knew that Jesus was about to come, and his child here, John, would be the one that would set the stage, you could say, for Jesus to come. Now let's skip over to chapter 2 here. John would be the one who would get people to Jesus, lead people, and get, him, get them ready for Jesus to come to announce him as the Messiah. And this would be fulfilled in Matthew chapter 3 and, and Luke chapter 3. But now, let's look at the excitement of another couple who had waited their entire life for the hope that Jesus would come in their lifetime. Back to Luke chapter 2, where we started. Let's go back up to verse number 22. Secondly, we're going to look at the excitement of Simeon and Anna. First of all, we saw the excitement of Zechariah. Secondly, and finally, we'll be looking at the excitement of Simeon and Anna, verses 22 to 38. So, Luke chapter 2, verse 22, following what needs to be done. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished they brought them to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord to present Jesus to God similar to what Hannah did with 
uh, Samuel. Samuel was the prophet and priest. Jesus is prophet, priest, and king. Kind of put a little uh, sense into that. Verse 23, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opened the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now verse 25. Simeon acknowledges Jesus. Verse 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout. He was a righteous man. He was devout. He was faithful. What else? Verse 25, waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Ghost was upon him. He was used by God. Verse 26, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Can you imagine that promise? That he would see Jesus in the flesh. It would be great to see Jesus in the flesh. Now, we're a little too late to see him right now, but to imagine seeing the Christ child in the flesh, that would just be like the, the icing on the cake, you could say. And Simeon was promised that he would be able to see Jesus, God's son, in human form before he would leave this world. And he does see him. Verse 27, and he came by the Spirit into the temple. Now, that's unique there. God led him. God knew when to bring Simeon to that point at that time. We talk about divine appointments, divine intervention. This is one of these ideas that he, that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, led him to this place at that particular time. Verse 27 continues, And when the parents brought in the Christ child, the G, Christ G, ah, let me say it again. When the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him after the custom of the law, the stuff we read in verse 22 to 24. Verse 28, then, he, then took he him, Simeon took Jesus up in his arms and blessed God and said, back where we started, verse 29, Lord, now let us thou, thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Knowing Jesus, you can know peace. You may have heard that phrase before, no Jesus, no peace. That's what that's the idea where this comes from. One of the ideas where this comes from is that when you know who Jesus is and you trust him, you have peace, the ultimate peace, the peace that passes all understanding. And that's what Simeon is realizing here, that the Christ child is here, that hope that had been promised and, and given and, and been anticipated for all these years is now there, sitting Whole it being held right in front of him. Verse 31, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people to a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Christ would have a twofold purpose to show the Gentiles light. Why? Because they lived in darkness. They served other gods. They served other things. And Jesus was going to be a light to them. And then, to give glory to the people of Israel, he would show who he is to his people, to show that he is the Savior, that he is the Christ. Verse 33, And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Can you imagine being in their sandals? Joseph and Mary, and they're just hearing all this stuff. I mean, I can imagine <clears throat> those eight days have been a whirlwind for them. Even more than that, they had to travel to Bethlehem, and they couldn't find a place to, to sleep in, to be able to lodge in, so they had to go to a manger. Jesus was born there. The wise men came, gave those gifts, and then now they come to this, and now people are still talking about it. Just this genuine excitement for the Christ child. And they just marvel. You could say they were speechless. Why? Because of all these things are finally, all the pieces of those puzzles are connecting together. For those who like to put puzzles together, doesn't it feel good when you finally start to figure out how the puzzle gets put together? Especially you get those thousand piece puzzles. So what do you typically do? 
you get the ribs first, right? You, you get the edges and all that. And then after that, you start piecing together the little pieces and the little things along that line. And then once you finally get into that rhythm, you just put everything together, and then there's your masterpiece. Jesus was that masterpiece of all those puzzles and all those prophecies being put together. And now the final piece is here, the Christ child was on this earth. And there's just this genuine excitement and joy for that. <clears throat> Verse 34, And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. He's going to tell that Jesus is going to suffer. Verse 35, Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Jesus came, but he would also have to suffer. Why? For our sins. That's the reason why Jesus came, was to suffer for us, because of what we had done wrong, and what we continually do wrong today. But the hope was there. <clears throat> there was hope. There was finally something that was there, to light, to light in the moon. Verse 36 to 38 gives us Anna and her reaction to this. Verse 36, And there was one Anna, a prophetess, a daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Aser. She was of a great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity, and she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings, and prayers night and day. Let me think. Let me give you this thought, and then we'll look at verse 38, and we'll be done. Can you imagine all these people from Adam and Eve and all the way up to this point? Why is it that they would serve God? Because they hadn't seen Jesus come yet. What, what made them want to do that? What made them want to even believe in the first place? It's that faith. The faith that God gave to them, that they could continually see, hey, look, there's going to be a light at the end of that tunnel. Jesus is going to be coming. And now, he's there. Anna gets to see it in her lifetime. Simeon gets to see it in his lifetime. What drove them toward that? Because God keeps his promises. God kept his promise. And that's what makes people want to serve God. That's what makes people want to follow God. That's what makes people want to die for the cause of Christ, is that God keeps his promises. God's never late. He's always on time, his time. We know that one day we're going to go up there and meet him, whether death takes us there or the rapture comes. But that promise is there that where I go, you'll be there. Only if you've asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior, though. But that promise is there. God promised Jesus to come, and he did. You think he can give us that same promise that when we die, because we trust him to be our Savior, that he'll fulfill that promise? Absolutely. And that's exciting. It's exciting to understand that. Verse 38. And she, coming in at that instant, gave thanks, likewise, unto the Lord. And spake of him to all them. And spake of him to all them, to them all, that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. So she acknowledges the Christ child. The Christmas season can make us feel like a little child again. I know every time we get to this time of year, it's always a fun ex It almost feels like a breath of fresh air at times. Because it's the end of the year. But it's just that exciting time. Nicole and I, the other night, we were uh, driving down to a place and we had this little Christmas light challenge to see who could find Christmas lights. That was something we did as a child and we were riding with people. And so we tried to catch the Christmas lights. But every time we did, we're like, Christmas lights! We didn't say, Christmas lights! Or, or like, Christmas. No, there was just a genuine excitement about it. Why? I don't know what it is about Christmas lights, but it just generally just makes people thrilled for the most part. I mean, looking at the tree over here and the other one back there, I mean, it's just, 
I don't know, it's just amazing just to see the way the lights go and form and all that. And it's just a genuine excitement around this time of year. But we can say that Jesus is the reason for the season. I encourage us, let us praise Jesus this Christmas season and be excited about what great things God has given to us. The excitement of Christmas, knowing that God fulfilled that promise of Jesus coming to this world. People were looking through it all throughout the millennia. And Zechariah knew that it was just about there when John the Baptist was born. And Anna and Simeon saw him in the flesh. Weighed their entire life. And they had that excitement. I encourage us that we can have that same excitement. Knowing that Jesus did come. And he did give us that hope. Father, help us as we look to conclude this service here this evening. I pray that you would be with us here. Father, I pray that you would just allow us just to be able to examine, to be able to see uh, what we can do to honor you, to serve you, to be able to be blessed by you. And Father, I pray that you would genuinely just give us this excitement to be able to share who you are to others. And and that as we, um, as we go into the rest of these days of this Christmas season and into the end of the year, Father, I pray that you would just help us to be able to, again, that we can just enjoy this season, that we can be able to know that you did come and you did come this first time to help us. Father, I do pray that you would just Encourage us this evening. Strengthen. Help us out. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen.